everyone, and welcome to Sermon Shorts, a video series here at Ridgecrest where we want to talk with our pastor just briefly about the past week's sermon. And we're thankful, uh, Pastor, for this series we're in, this entitled Myths That Lead to Misbelief. And this past Sunday, this message entitled The Battle for Your Mind, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and 11, specifically mm-hmm. looking at a few verses there. But Pastor, you spoke specifically in this message about a thought of the woke church. And in your message point about the demonic producer of myths, you kind of spoke to that. And so help us today as we kind of walk in application of this message a little more. What is the woke church? Define that a little bit for uh, a little more for us. Well, um, I also mentioned in the message, you know, that woke or wokeness is the new term for political correctness. correctness. That was the term we used to use, what is politically correct. And so now the kind of trendy term is woke or wokeness. And in the church, it means, uh, in my view, it uh, means a twisting kind of, of truth that is more reflective of what is the cultural norm than the biblical norm. Right. So, um, uh, in in this message, I refer back to the garden. It was the it was the deception that uh, the devil brought to uh, to Eve and to Adam when he s- yeah, took a a partial idea from God, a partial truth, a half truth. Which, by the way, when you take a when you use a half truth, it's a whole lie. Yeah. And he used something God had said. Has God really said? He just qu- created a question mark uh, with Adam and Eve to deceive them into believing that um, there was a better way or another way um, and that God was holding out on them. Today, I'm afraid that there are a lot of beliefs in the church that have taken taken, uh, a little bit of the truth of God and then taken the cultural ideas of what's normal and tried to marry the two of those so that they don't offend the world and they don't speak complete truth to to the church, and so that's what I mean when I talk about kind of a a wokeness that we're seeing, and not everywhere, of course, but we're seeing some of that being reflected in in some of the even church and culture uh, mixture of ideas. So let's reach the culture. So let's take the the cultural ideas and see if we can we can take God's word and twist them together and come out with a hybrid kind of uh, idea or belief. Now, Pastor, this is not something that's really been talked about a lot, I would say, as far as the context of the church. We put this in the context of the culture and politics or how we want to go there, but in the context of the church. And as you mentioned that in point one of this past week's sermon, I just wrote in my notes, just kind of with an asterisk there, how dangerous yeah. how dangerous this is for our current climate and context. And so as we kind of wrap up just this thought about this, what would you say to our viewers, to our church, in further, um, again, application of what we talked about Sunday, how do we handle that? How do we navigate where the church could possibly go in and make sure we don't see ourselves go there? Yeah, well, and that's a good question uh, because uh, – um, P.T. Barnum, Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus, right, right. many years ago had this statement, never underestimate the staying power of human folly or human foolishness. We all think we're above being deceived. In fact, in the message Sunday, we also referred to 2 Corinthians 11 right. and verse 4 where Paul said, I fear that just like the serpent deceived Eve, Adam and Eve in the garden, he will also deceive your hearts and your minds from the truth. Uh, And then he used this illustration, he said, because if someone comes along and they teach this, you just accept it. If another comes along and they teach this, uh, you just accept it. And he was talking about uh, people coming along and bringing cultural ideas into the church and their their uh, theology, and he said, I, "I'm afraid because you just believe it." Now, why would they just believe it? Essentially, because they haven't learned the truth. And so, how do, and I, I say all that to say, so how do we prevent ourselves from being deceived? Yeah, and that is, you've got to know the truth. That's good. 
And the truth is God's Word. So everything, and I talked about this in the message, everything has to be viewed through the lens of God's Word. The Bible says about the Berean Christians that they were more noble than those at Thessalonica because they searched the Scriptures daily to see whether or not the things that they were being taught and told were true. So they used the filter of God's Word against the ideas of the age and even the things that were being taught, think about this, to believers. And so they, so before they would just readily swallow something, they'll say, does that stack up as truth against the Word of God? Right. So the Word of God has to be the filter. And for it to be the filter, we got to know it. Right. You good. know, if yeah. we don't know it, it will not form that filter against the, uh, the woke ideas of the world and the... Uh, biblical truth of the word. And so that that has to become the filter. Otherwise, we're all uh, uh, prone to be deceived by trying with good intentions. Right. By the way, and I'm not impugning the motives of people who are saying, we want to reach out, but but you're not reaching someone if you don't give them the truth. Right. You haven't really reached them. You may have massaged their feelings and by the way, this isn't a popular topic. Yeah, <laughs> You know, I understand that, that some people say, well, you just don't get it or you don't get the culture. The problem is it we, we must not let the culture tell us what to believe. Right. We let God tell us what to believe. So that's the counter. You got to know it. You just got to know the truth of God. I'll be talking about that in this Sunday's message, in fact. So, Pastor, as you think about this, you know, in the world of student ministry, there were some more recent uh, research that came out and it said this, that what would keep a teenager faithful in the church over their years versus the statistics that say so many will leave the church and then some come back and those kind of things. But it was the personal intake of God's word. That was the statistic, the number one thing on the statistic that kept a teenager faithful after high school in their college years to the church. And so share this thought as we wrap up to the viewer out there that says, I need to experience that. I need to make sure I'm using the Word of God as the filter and I'm taking time to know it and read it and study it practically for a person that just says, I need to start, what would you say to them? Well, uh, first of all, it's going to take discipline. I mean, you're going to have to make that an important part of your your daily life. I'm so glad, Chase, when I was in high school, I had some guys from Campus Crusade for Christ who pulled me into a group and they began to disciple. I already knew the Lord. I love the Lord. But they taught me how to spend time with God. That's good. There is nothing short of consistent time with the Lord. Bible study. You say, I don't know how to do Bible study. Bible study just means that you take your Bible and you start reading it. And some of it you're going to say, well, I don't get it. Stay with it. I mean, that's what I would say. And to students... I will tell you this, and you mentioned that about students. I'm not surprised at that because if you had have asked me what should a student do, I would have said intake of the Word. Right. Immerse themselves in the Word. Right. That's a practice, a habit, a routine that you have to establish uh, in your life. And and that's how you get to know the nature and character of God. And and by the way, not just reading it, but then applying it. And yeah. I'm so glad those guys taught me to do that. It has been the single greatest influence in my life, in my worldview, and obviously in its repercussions for my eternity. So I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but simply put, discipline yourself to have time in God's Word every day. And it's not about reading volumes of Scripture. You can read just a small section yeah. and meditate on that. Right. I'll talk about that Sunday. And meditate on that, what that means to think through. I, that's what I would say uh, to our, our viewers. Uh, that's how you counter and equip yourself uh, to, to deal with politically correct ideas, uh, woke ideas, those sorts of things. How do they line up with the Word of God? Yeah, that's so good, Pastor. Thank you for this encouragement today, but also this series. Um, So many people um, sharing just how this has been a beneficial thing for them already and uh, excited for more um, 
messages in the days ahead as we think about these myths that lead to misbelief. And so thank you all for checking out Sermon Shorts today. And we encourage you, if you haven't, to make sure you go back and listen to the full message from this past week from our pastor as we think about the battle for the mind. And we look forward to the days ahead as we continue to study God's Word together and fight against these myths um, and really lies of the enemy and make sure we're focusing our lives on the truth of the Word of God.